I'm at the Kinderhook Creek here in Valencia, New York, and it's right here where artist Laura Canamella found the inspiration for her work. How so? Let's find out. I live very close to a gorge where the Kinderhook Creek flows through. It's a wonderful, dynamic, and uh, a very inspiring landscape. I just love looking at the way the striations on the rock and the interconnectedness of the rocks and the water, the way they affect each other. Um, so I, I look at that a lot, and I also think about how small details in the nature that I find there also reflect the larger topography of the area. I'm making these rock-like sculptures. They might sometimes look like water. They, they uh, often look like the landscape that I've experienced around here, and then also sometimes in my travels to other parts of the country or the world. Before I had been doing ceramics, I worked mostly in paper. The paper started first by making things that were inspired by very small um, miniature paintings, so Persian miniatures or, um, or Japanese illustrations for the Tale of Genji, which I did a, a large series on. I was cutting through a lot of layers of paper to get these paper relief sculptures. And as I was cutting, there was this technique um, that was used in Japanese painting, which is to give a, a perspective as if you're looking down through clouds. And so I found that I really loved cutting the clouds and layers and layers and layers to cut these clouds. And so eventually I kind of focused on just the clouds, but then it became topographical. So then I realized I was really doing a landscape out of the paper, cutting through layers of paper. Sometimes I'd get one done a year, and I was working full time. I taught ceramics and sculpture, both on the college level, and then I taught for well, over 20 years at my local high school at Kabad Crane. So I started to explore ways that I could use ceramics to get some of the same layering technique and some of the same sculptural effects that I was getting in paper, but um, at a shorter amount of time. I don't do any specific drawing for the pieces that I'm making. I have layers of clay laid out. So this, um looks like a giant sandwich, <laughs> a submarine. You've got your different layers of meat in there and it looks really tasty. <laughs> and you're just gonna rip it and tear it. Oh uh, yeah. Transform it. I'm just gonna transform it. I alter it and then I change it and then I tear it and then I, <laughs> and then I throw it on the floor. Now, I, I mean, I do a lot of things to these to make them turn into that. A lot of bags. A lot of bags to keep the clay from drying out until until the work is done and what needs to be dried out. You know, what I would do is cut strips of this off and then assemble them so you can see where there's different clay, where there's different colors. Um, you can see those striations. I'll do a first firing in, in my electric kiln that, that is here, but then I bring it to kilns in Columbia County at the Okidoki Studio. The wood firing completes the work. All the colors that you see, other than the very small amount of glaze that's running down the center, that was all done by the kiln. So it like responds to the form and it deposits ash in the way that it's like flowing through the kiln. It'll deposit ash on the form based on what the form is and based on where it's placed in the kiln. 
When you think about the way that the rocks in the gorge, uh, uh, you know, were built up, you know, that's layers of sediment. That's layers and layers and layers of sediment that, that were built up there. And then the glacier came through and, and tore parts of it away. And then, and then you know, the creek is, is constantly flowing and, you know, the, the rocks affect the direction of the creek. And then the creek is also, you know, creating more striations on it too. So, um, it just feels like that whole process of building up and taking away that positive and negative is, is happening both there and here. Um, and, and that's just fascinating.